Hello Fred, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. 2005 Toyota Tacoma with 256,000 miles on the odometer. This owner, I know him for years and he tries to do as much as possible of that maintenance himself. However, the day he came with a problem he cannot do at home and it was the AC compressor. Now he did his brake job himself in the past. As I said, he's one of those DIYers and he admitted, hey, I even did a brake fluid flush, but I bought, uh, what he bought, a pressure, pressure system for brake fluid flush. I did it like a year ago. And he admitted that he went a jungle jungle and he didn't replace the rotors or didn't resurface them. So you, I, I said to him, hey, I can see it right away. I know you didn't because it's kind of has those grooves and all the marks on it. This is what you do if you skip the rotors. So we agreed that he should have done that. He should have bought the rotors with the pads. The pads are here. They are like 60% left on them. So that was fine. No problem. But the reason I'm making this video is that he's not lucky. He's not lucky today. He's already talking about it. replacing AC compressor, doing the whole job. All the police. That's costly. The AC compressor has a speed sensor on the bottom of it the clutch everything it's separate the compressor with all the parts from Toyota it's almost thousand bucks but he's not lucky because of this I was inspecting everything for him as you can imagine and I didn't forget to spin the wheels to spin the wheels you are wandering around kicking around so you better spin spin the wheels. Let me show you how it's supposed to be looking and we will discuss what happened on the other side. This is how it should turn. The back always depends. Yeah, this one you can turn it. This is just the gears in the rear. Differential. The front has the CV exhaust, it's a four-wheel drive, but it should spin. And this one didn't. So I said, I fully understand you are anxious to go with the AC compressor job and all the police, you want to take care of it. You don't want to deal with the CV axles, which are ripped on inner boots. Both inner boots are gone. Believe it or not, one of them from Toyota dealer costs 500 bucks. So he didn't even mention dealing with that. However, I said, okay, I will go really quick, take it apart and give you results. And results are bad. I should have grabbed the camera a little bit sooner because when the caliper was still here attached, I also couldn't really spread the brake pads to pull them out especially on the inner inner side of the rotor and inner is this side so I already saw this coming then I used my ratcheting tool this one is a blue point you can buy it from snap-on and you basically install it between these four pistons and start ratcheting it and it spreads them look please on the bottom bottom left the piston look on the ratcheting tool how it's crooked this side it's aligned perfectly with this line let's say so it nicely pushed the pistons inside but if you look on the other side, it's all crooked. The tool successfully pushed the top piston in, but look at that. If I continue 
pushing on it, I can damage the tool. I can see and hopefully you can see clearly. This is our problem. This piston is seized. For me as a shop, it automatically means I'm finished here. I can still take the other side apart too. But in general, you know what's coming. Do you? Also look at those rotors. I hope you can see the detail. Look how much rust is on those. Let's look at these areas. They are a toast too. So what you will say, my friend, you guys watch these videos on Toyota Maintenance, you are experts. What you will recommend in this moment right here to this owner. So what did you say? What I see, if it needs to be done correctly, rotors, pads, calipers, and bleeding air from the system. He said he did entire brake fluid flush a year ago. I need to offer it to him. He can skip it, but it's up to him. Unfortunately, we are not talking about the AC compressor anymore. This is seriously stuck. It's no question about it. Even if I will start forcing it, just for you guys who think, hey, just force it more. Grab those big pliers. These are the channel locks, big monsters. I was only helping myself to tiny bit squeeze those brake pads to create space between the rotor, brake pads and pistons and pull them out carefully. Uh, I already felt that one of them or two of them are bad. Even if I take these and, or put it in the vise and push it in. Guys, that will not work for you. Don't try that because there is a rust. Tolerances between the caliper and the piston which keeps moving in and out are absolutely tiny and there is a rust. It will seize on you. You will not fix it by just pressing it in then using the brake pedal moving it out towards to the pads again. Uh-uh. You will get in trouble with that sooner or later. Most likely immediately. You will try to do that. You will go on test drive and the steering wheel will start pulling on one side. Your brand new rotor will heat up. It's just a disaster. So, unfortunately, this is not good. Or our plans go out of the window. I need to go check the parts availability and now unfortunate big money are being spent on an entire rebuild of this front brakes. Why is that? Hmm. Did he forgot or did he do that brake fluid flush too late? Hmm. Maybe. But if you look, there is a very heavy surface rust. The rest of the vehicle, if I will show you, it's no problem. The frame is beautiful, very tiny surface rust. But for some reason, these rotors are nasty. I will be not resurfacing them on my brake light, which is just right there. You know where it is. You know my shop very well. There's no sense. That needs to be done. And he agreed he should have done that previously. You come to the Peter for AC compressor and he's selling you the brake job suddenly, huh? Is this guy crazy? But that's the reality. He will be able to see the video later. I will send him some pictures also, explain it. But he will understand very well. He does a lot of work on this truck himself. So I want to show you this. I'm sorry I didn't film it from the beginning. I didn't expect this. I should have, should have thought of it. It's a good video. Seized brakes. How often you can see it. You can, everybody can learn from it. Basically the only way to prevent it is 
to do the brake fluid flushes. How often are you supposed to do the brake fluid flush? Well, roughly each three years. And again, it depends on the environment. If you park next to the ocean, well, that's a different story. The salt air will be causing, and the moisture will be causing it way quicker, the problems. So everything depends on how you drive, uh, where you live, and so on and so on. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a common sense you understand that. So I hope you like this video. If you like it, please give it a thumb up and stay tuned. We subscribe, have notification, so you don't miss the future videos. Thank you for watching, supporting this channel, and have a great day, my friend.